on guys it's Brandon here today we're gonna to do something a little bit different for YouTube we have a full video lesson on how to play a video called I'm bringing back pink guitars that I uploaded here about eight years ago and this comes directly from my instructional guitar video platform called the shred light district that I host on patreon so it features hours and hours and hours of instructional content just like this and basically every two weeks I check in with my patrons I show off the gear I'm using and I teach them something from either my present or my past. So it could be something I'm working on right now, or it could be something from a solo that I did a while ago, or a YouTube video, it could be songwriting, it could be just general techniques or music theory, guitar setups, all sorts of stuff is on there. And I take requests from my patrons, of course, I read what people want and I try to make the people happy. So a lot of people are just sort of vaguely aware that I do this, that it's a thing because they see a lot of these teaser videos, these like one minute videos I upload on YouTube playing some fast shred guitar or whatever on Instagram, Facebook, but they're not sure exactly what the Shred Light District is. What does it really feature? How long are the videos? What are they like? How do I teach? So I figured I would just throw this one up on YouTube for free for you guys to check out. If you enjoy it, you can find more at patreon.com slash Brandon Ellis. If you subscribe, you get to see everything there ever was. Also, if you like this content here on YouTube, subscribe to me here. I post a lot of videos. And coming up right now is going to be lesson number 75 from the Shred Light District. I'm bringing back pink guitars. We're tuned to E flat standard today, and that's all you really need to know. So let's check it out. What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today's lesson is a request from Alex Clockman. It's the I'm bringing back pink guitars video from about eight years ago it seems like now. And uh, this video is really mem memorable to me because I remember when I made it and it was kind of one of the first like jam videos that I put together that wasn't like metal shit. It was more kind of just trying to make some beautiful melodies happen and stuff. And there was a really great response to it, and so I started to do a lot more of that and make all these videos of the, the genre of jam video that I'm like known for on uh, YouTube and Instagram and stuff. So it's like one of the first of, of getting my uh, hitting my stride, I guess, on that sort of thing. And uh, this guitar is really cool. So this is my Barrington. Uh, the the truss rod cover says BRG882TC, which is a, a hell of a model number. But basically... What the deal is with Barrington, they were made by ESP for like a music store in Illinois, from what I understand, back before ESP was making their own guitars, I think. Um, they were just making parts, so they would make like Kramer necks and Kramer Stage Masters and stuff. So this is basically like an off-brand Kramer Stage Master, which is already an off-brand ESP, I guess. So it's kind of like a Horizon. Um, I stumbled upon these on a forum one time or something and I was like, oh, I need to find one of those and I was always like on the lookout for them. I had another one that was like a ruby red color, but it was uh, it had a flat top, like more just um, like soloist type, uh, you know, forearm contour and, and flat body and it had an ebony fretboard. But this one has a carved top and it has a rosewood fretboard, which I love the sound of rosewood fretboards and it's kind of unusual that you get like a neck through 24 fret guitar that has a rosewood fretboard for some reason. They just always kind of go to ebony for that sort of thing. So it's just, I mean, not that it's really unusual, but I love the sound of rosewood. I feel like it's like underrated um, just because ebony's more expensive, but it doesn't necessarily sound any better to me necessarily, but it looks cool and whatever. But anyways, um, the color on this is really awesome. It's like this super candy magenta, like pearlescent kind of shiny color. And um, the way I found this guitar is pretty funny. So I was, scouring the internet and I found a forum post from some dude who was like oh new gear day here's this Barrington super strat that I got he's like I thought it was red I bought it online and it showed up and it's pink and I don't like it but I'll hold on to it for a while that's what he posted and I saw it and it was already months old and so I sent the guy like a private message on the forum and I was like hey do you still have that thing and he was like yeah I'll sell it to you for $250 shipped and I was like alright sold man I sent him the money and it took months for him to send me the guitar. I thought he'd like scammed me because he just like had every excuse like, oh, I just got fired and I had to, I, I spent my last money on this and I can't, I don't, I can't afford to ship it right now and all this stuff. But I spent so little money on it that I was like, you know what, if, if I lost it, like whatever, I'd rather just like keep my hopes up that he's actually going to send it rather than like try to dispute this guy or anything like that. And eventually he really did send the guitar. And it's actually got one of the most stable necks that I've got in my entire collection. Like when I got this guitar and I went to do a fret level, I could see that just the neck was straight like an arrow. Like the frets just filed away all immediately at once, all from the same um, part. So it was just really, um, you could tell. And I'd like never have to adjust this guitar or anything. It just always plays great. 
It's a really good guitar. Um, so they come with Goto Floyds. When I got this guitar, it had some other Floyds, some like Schaller or something on there. So I bought a new Goto to put it on here. And it turns out that new Gotos are different than old Gotos. They're like physically larger. And so it actually like rubbed against the paint in the truss rod cavity here. And that was a bummer. So I've kind of filed the edge of this tremolo here to make it like fit properly. Um, the pickup in this guitar, I put in a, uh, a Seymour Duncan 59 Custom Hybrid. And I loved that pickup and I loved the way it made this guitar sound. And that was part of the reason I started experimenting with hybrid pickups with two different coils and how I kind of landed on what is going to be soon, hopefully, my Seymour Duncan signature pickup. So um, this guitar was, was kind of uh, inspirational for that. Um, what else is cool about this? It has a really awesome neck heel. It's like super kind of sculpted out up here, very great access. And the nut has like the old school, um, you know, it's mounted from with the machine screws through the back of the neck here, which I much prefer. I love that. It feels so sturdy and I can tighten it with the strings on the guitar. I don't have to take the nut pads off to tighten it. I can even shim it without having to take the nut pads off or anything. You know, you can just loosen those and kind of push it through and slip a shim in there and tighten it back up. So I dig that. Um, previous owner put the BMW M Power decal on the back of the headstock and I thought that was pretty rad so I just kept it there. And uh, yeah, this is that's pretty much the rundown on this. I believe it's an alder body and a maple top. And um, yeah, the maple neck and the, the rosewood fretboard. So um, well, the pickup configuration is really cool too. I like this humbucker and single thing. And it just has like this little three-way kind of like almost like a mini toggle switch here, this little paddle switch, which is really cool. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the, the rundown on the Barrington guitars. If you see one of these, they're awesome. You should grab it if it's cheap because um, this guitar is so killer. I, I actually really, really do love this guitar. So I'm stoked to kind of give it some TLC and bust it out for today's lesson. So without further ado, let's check out on bringing back pink guitars. So in this video, I was playing an E flat standard. So we're in E flat standard today. And it's in the Mixolydian flat six mode in the key of D flat, or I can just call it D to make it simple. So uh, it sounds like this. <laughs> sort of sound. So that's what we're going to be messing with today. It's beautiful scale. And uh, I had my phaser on when I made that video, so I have a phaser on today, so it's got a little bit part of the tone. But also the tone that I have going right now is a lot of it's really attributed to this pickup here. It's really got this like squishy kind of bitey attack. <laughs> It's like very stringy sounding, and I really like that. That's what I like about the hybrid coil design. But anyways, let's check out the first riff here. So the video starts with this arpeggio phrase here that goes like this. So this is basically a D dominant 7 arpeggio with my cascading arpeggio technique that goes into uh, just some scalar notes and a bit of a melodic phrase. So the arpeggio part... That's the lick we're going to play. When I did it in the video, I actually swept into it like this. But I find it easier to go. So I'm going to teach it to you guys that way. So we're going to start at the 12th fret on the D string. With the index finger, we're going to pick that note and we're going to hammer on the 16. Then we're going to go to the G string at the 14th fret. Pick that note and we're going to hammer on the 17. So that's what we have so far. After that, we're going to downstroke the 16th fret on the D and sweep into the 14th fret on the G. Then we're going to hammer on the 17 and we're going to upstroke the 15 on the B. So, so far we've got... Now we're going to go... So I'm going to pick the 14, hammer on the 17 on the G. Then I'm going to pick the 15 on the B and hammer on the 19. So, so far. Now we're going to downstroke the 17 on the G, sweep into the 15 on the B, hammer on the 19, 
and we're going to upstroke the 15 on the high E. So. Now I'm going to go. So I pick the 15 on the B, and I hammer on the 19. Then I pick the 15 on the high E, and I hammer on the 17. So. Now we go. So I'm going to downstroke the 19 on the B, sweep into the 15 on the high E. Then I'm going to up on the 17, down on the 18, and bend the 18. So the picking pattern for this, it's like down, hammer, up, hammer, down, down, hammer, up, repeat. Down, hammer, up, hammer, down, down, hammer, up, down, hammer, up, hammer, down, down, hammer, up. Then for the next lick, we go up here to the 20th fret, we bend it up a full set. Then we let go, we go back to the 18, then we're going to play the 17 and hammer on the 18, then I'm going to play the 20 on the B, the 17 on the high E, and bend the 20 on the B up a full step. So after that, we go. So we're gonna start with this. So we're going to take the 19th fret on the B string, play it, then bend it, and release. Then we're going to pull off to the 17. Then we're going to slide down to the 15. Then we're going to pick the 19 with our pinky. Then we're going to go... So we kind of just repeat this same pattern, but instead of bending a half step, we're going to just bend a full step and we're going to bend right there. We're not going to play the fret first and then bend it like we did. So we're just doing the same kind of thing. So I'm at the 17th fret, I bend up a full step, release, pull off to 15, slide down to 13, and grab with my pinky that 17th fret. Then we're going to do the exact same pattern, two frets down, and then... So this is a little bit different here. So. We are at the 13th fret down here. We bend up that full step and release. We pull off. When we do the slide, we only go down a half step. So just slide down one fret. Now I'm going to hammer on real quick the 11. Then I'm going to pick the 12 on the G. And then we're going to go to the 10 on the B. And then I'm going to bend the 12 up and release. And so I bend and release the 12, then on the 11, on the G, I'm going to play the 11th fret, bend it up to the note of the 12, and release. And it really is like three notes. It's like... Now we start this arpeggio, so after... I'm going to upstroke the 12 on the D and carry that upstroke as a sweep into the 12 on the A. Then I'm going to down on the 10th fret. And I'm going to slide down to the 9. Then on the low E, we're going to play the 10. Then we slide down to the 5 the three, and the two.
slide in to the five on the A string. And that's essentially the whole part. So we've got... All of this is just that D mixolydian flat 6 scale. And we're just playing this uh, D major arpeggio. Except it has the 4 added to it. So this is the triad. So I'm adding the 4. That's the sound of that arpeggio. So now we have the melody and it goes with this kind of 2 chord vamp. So it goes like this. So the chord progression that goes with this, it's like a D major to a G minor, which is kind of like a reverse 5-1 if you're, if you're familiar with Roman numerals, because uh, if, if it was G minor was the key and that was the 1, then we would be going 5-1. But instead we're really focused around that dominant chord being like the tonic, basically. So. That's why I'm saying it's like a reverse 5-1. It is a 5-1, except the, the 5 is like the home base. So, so we start with this. So we slide into the 5th fret on the A. Then we hammer on the 9. Then we're going to play the 7 on the D and the G. So I'm sweeping that just down, down. Then I do an upstroke on the 9 on the G. And then I slide up to 11. So I actually pick the note on the 9 and slide up. Just to get that nice kind of slide in there. Then I pull off to the 9 and I slide back down to the 7. Then I play the 7 on the D. And then I raise that to the 8 on the D, and that's when we suddenly get that G minor sound happening. So when we go up to the 8 on the D string, then I'm going to go to the 7 on the G, and the 10 on the B then back to the 7 on the G and to the 8 on the B and I let that ring out as a chord as a G minor chord and I give it some tremolo bar vibrato then I do the same thing again I pick these other two melodic notes. So I go 8 on the D, to 7 on the G, to 11 on the G, play that 8 on the D again, and then I'm going to play the 9 on the G and let those two notes ring out together. So we do the exact same thing, but then I go, so I slide up into the 13, and I'm doing like a, a dip return with the bar, pull off to the 11, and then I slap the bar, slide down one fret, slap the bar again. slide down to the 8th fret on the B, and we just give that note some vibrato. So, so far we have three of these, right? We're like... So 
So this time now we do this instead. <laughs> So when we get up here, I chain this into this kind of thing. So from the 7 on the D, we hammer on the 8, then on the G, we just do this hammer on, back down, and hammer back up from 7 to 9 to 11. So 7, 9, 11, 9, 7, 9, 11. Then we jump up an octave and do the same thing. So on the B, I go to the 10, I hammer on the 11. Then on the high E, I go to the 10, and I hammer on 12 and 14. So at this point, I'm going to slide my index finger up to the 12. And do this phrase. So slide up to the 12, hammer on 14 and 15. Then I bend 14 up to the note of the 15. Release and pull off the 12. Then I hammer on the 14th fret on the B string. And then I upstroke the 12 on the high E. And then I bend the 15th fret on the B up a full step. I release, I pull off to the 13, and then I play the 15th fret and I just give it a vibrato. So. Sounds like that. So the whole thing. So next up is this Michael Romeo style tapping arpeggio, and I think I've shown basically this exact lick in my Michael Romeo style string skip tapping arpeggios lesson. So it goes like this. So let's check out the A string part. So we slide into the 5th fret on the A. Then we hammer on the 9, we pull off back to the 5, and we pull off to the open. Then we hammer on back up 5 to 9. Now we're going to tap the 13. And we pull off all the way back to the open, and we hammer on back up. Then we tap the 13, and we do the same thing, we pull off all the way and hammer on all the way back up. one more time, back down and back up. So that's basically the A string thing. And this is basically just a D major arpeggio, but that first note we're tapping, that 13 up there, that's the flat 6. So that's that flat 6 from Mixolydian flat 6, it gives it that sound. So that's why we're getting that kind of exotic flavor from this arpeggio so far. So now we add the string skipping part. So we jump up to the 5th fret on the G string with a hammer on from the index finger. Then we hammer on the 7th fret with the ring finger. Then I tap the 11. And I pull off and I hammer on back up again and tap. Now we're going to jump up to the high E. We're going to hammer on the 5th fret again with the index finger. And then we're going to hammer on the 8th fret with the pinky or with the ring finger. And now I'm going to tap the 10th fret. Then I'm going to pull off. And then we're going to descend the G. 
with that tap and two pull off. So. So after that descent from the high E back to the G, we're going to slide on the G string, the index finger, right up to the 11th fret and play this. So we slide in. I play the 11, hammer on the 12, and I tap the 14. Then on the high E, I'm going to hammer on the 10, hammer on the 14, tap the 15, and descend. Now I'm going to pull off from the index finger to the open string. And I go back and forth a couple times like that. So it's like... And then the 13th fret bent up a full step. So the whole lick now we have... Some technical advice for this string skip tapping arpeggio technique, I have a few things. So one weak point is usually the index finger hammer on, on the left hand. So people aren't really used to having to start a note with a hammer on from the index finger, especially not on like the G or the high E. So a lot of people don't have the strength with that. So I would just kind of practice like that blues guy thing, that like... Do it with the, the shape. And then you can kind of work in the other finger for the shape. to get that left hand index finger tapping nice and strong and with attack. The other thing is the muting. So you want to kind of tap as lightly and gently as you can so that when you're done with a string you don't have like a, a pull off happening to the open string that you have to kind of overpower with the hammer on on the G string to actually make that note cut through. Need to be careful how you tap. So one thing is to do it light, but also if you can master like the dead tap, like the like kind of muting the string after the tap by just keeping your finger pad on the string but lifting it off the fret. Then you can kind of do your muting that way, or you can also kind of put the palm of the right hand over that string when you're done with it. So the combination of those two things, like getting that, what I'm calling the dead tap, and just being conscious of the string muting, so you can kind of separate all these notes, it's going to allow the room for that left hand hammer on to actually punch through and actually like cut over all of the noise that would, would have otherwise been there. The last thing we do is this big D major arpeggio, like this. So the first thing I do is I slide into the 10 on the low E, give it some vibrato. Then, I'm going to pick the 9 hammer on the 12 with my ring finger, then I'm going to pick the 12 on the D, followed by the 12 on the A again. And I'm kind of rolling or like sort of jumping my ring finger back and forth, so it's not like... 
not barred necessarily. You can also use some palm muting for that. So now we're going to jump up to the G string to the 11 on the G followed by the 12 on the D. Then we're going to jump up to the B to the 10 and the 11 and then the high E with the 10 to the 10 on the B. And then we're going to play the 14 on the high E and pull off to the 10. So the whole thing so far. Then we're going to pick the 10 on the B again and pick that 14 again. And from there we slide up into the next arpeggio. But one thing real quick, I used to pick this lick, but now I just hybrid pick it. I go... And I can do that much more quickly and cleanly because it's kind of a mess to alternate pick through all this. You can't really do it very quickly. Or I can't, really. can't do it much faster than that. But with hybrid picking, I can do it pretty quick, but it sounds completely different. I can do it pretty quickly. Uh, it's really difficult still to keep clean and it kind of depends on like how long your nails are. You kind of have to keep that consistent or your technique starts to drift. So, um, you know, whichever way you prefer. But the next thing we're going to do is slide up to the sweep arpeggio. So, we slide into the 17, we pull off to the 14. Then we're going to sweep up to 15, 14, 16, 17, 12 on the A. Then we're going to hammer on that 17 again and sweep down from 16, 14, 15, 14. And then we kind of do a half descent again. So up here I upstroke the 15 when I get to the apex. I pull off again, and I just do those two up, up from 15 to 14 again. Then I'm going to real quick downstroke that 17th fret again, and slide up to the 22. And I play this arpeggio, which is just another D major. So this one, we pull off from the 22 to the 17, and then we sweep up the 19. And I'm rolling my finger, trying to keep these notes separate. Then on the A string, we get to the 21. And we go back to the 17, and then we just do it in reverse. I hit that 22nd fret twice. Then I give it some tremolo bar vibrato, and then I pick the 24th fret, and I bend it up a full step and give it some vibrato. So the whole thing. Then at the end, I just play this. Like open D add nine chord, so the fretting here, basically I'm going open, open, two, three, open. So that open high E is the nine. And then I hammer on the fourth fret on the D. And I'm just sort of arpeggiating this, like picking the strings up and back and forth. And that's the whole video. All right, YouTube, so that's a wrap. Now, the final thing that I do at the end of every lesson is I play everything very slowly with a very close-up camera angle so that you guys can see anything that you might have missed during the lesson or anything that you just needed to see up close. So that's what we're going to close out with. But before that, I just wanted to say, if you liked what you saw today, please subscribe. And if you want more, there's a whole lot more at the Shred Light District on Patreon. There's also a tablature for this lesson here. So if you follow the link in the description, it'll bring you to the Patreon page. I've made this lesson on there 
uh, available to the public so that you can see the attachments and download the tab from there. So definitely check that out if, if you're into the tablature. But anyways, thanks for checking it out, guys. I hope to see you again. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.